Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hi everybody, Pastor Everett. Uh, excited to uh, bring the word of the Lord to you today. And uh, I just want to encourage you, uh, wherever you are right now, um, to, to just hit share on this message. Share this message on your, right on your timeline and just, just let's just see what God will do. Uh, in the next, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so. And let's just see God move. And uh, God wants to use each of us. And uh, we always think that, well, God wants to use, you know, them over there or, or someone else. But he really wants to use us. Uh, maybe we should say that together. God wants to use me. <laughs> let's make it personal. Because, because he really does want to, want to use the me that we all live with to, to really impact and change not just the world necessarily out there, but the world as, as we see it, which is inside of us. He wants to impact our heart. And, uh, and so that's what I want to really talk to you just for a moment about today. I was, uh, I was reading um, uh, a few days ago um, this story. Jesus was a storyteller, and uh, he was telling the story of, about some virgins. And there were uh, ten of them, five that were wise and five that were foolish, and uh, he's, he's telling this story, and I was, I was just thinking about uh, uh, some of the dumb things that I've done in my life. And, and uh, I think we could all, maybe, maybe we should all, you know, sit down for a minute, but we can all think of some dumb things that we've done in our life, you know, some, some stupid comments we made or, or some, um, some moments that we really weren't, you know, doing the best that we could. Uh, we weren't, we weren't uh, presenting ourselves properly. And so we begin to experience these things in our life where, well, we, this is dumb and this, or this was foolish and this was, wow, you were really smart or you were wise. And, and so uh, we, can, we can look at those things in our life as, as we look back or as we even contemplate who we are. I think it's even a little bit bigger than that, though. It's how the other people perceive us. Uh, do they perceive you as a a wise man or a, a wise person or do they perceive you as a, a foolish person and then we could go a little deeper with that and we could say you know why is it that I, I have this perception of myself uh, before I enter the room or before I even walk when I'm walking up to you what what perception uh, has have other people in our life uh, begin to reference uh, when when they see us and that's a little scary because because it's it's that perception or that influence can, can we just say it like that? It, it's our influence in other people's lives that really determine uh, what, what we become uh, in their life. And not, not just their life, because they're going to go tell their friends and their friends. And, and pretty soon, you know, they, they don't invite you around as much anymore. Or maybe they do just to see what you're going to do. And, and some of us thrive. We really thrive on the, uh, that, the, those moments in the spotlight or those moments when we're, we, we just, we, you know, we're the center of attention, and, and, and that could be good and bad. And, and often, it's those limitations. <laughs> See, I'm keep, I keep going deeper. It's the limitations that we, we place on ourselves and others place on us that ultimately will cause us to rise or fall in life. And, and so the, the truth is, is as we read the story of the, the, the ten smart people and the Ten foolish people, or the five and the five. But we, we look at the, the the story of those the lives lived out. We read it in the page. I'll just read a couple verses. Uh, Matthew twenty five verses eight, nine, and ten are really the crux of what I feel the Lord is saying to us. He says, "And the foolish uh, said to the wise, Give us of your oil. Our lamps are gone out.' And 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 right there, I just want to. I want to. I want to." I want to suggest to you that, that because someone else has something you don't have, you should not expect them to give you what they have, okay? So, so the, the, the wise ones say to the foolish ones, uh, he said, not so, we're not going to give you what we have, lest there's not enough for us and for you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And... So the wise, the wise uh, virgin said to the foolish, we can't give you what we, what we have because, because we, we may not have enough for ourselves. And now they're waiting for something. They're waiting for the, the, the groom to come. So they had, they had, you had 
uh, an expectation in all of them that something was about to happen, and, and they were, they were all, all waiting, but some were wise and some were foolish. The ones that were wise had something to, to give, right? The, the ones that were foolish had nothing, and they were expecting something that wasn't theirs. So they didn't work for it. So the wise said, go buy, go to the, those that sell and buy, lest we all don't have enough for anything. So, so the, the, the question, this is the question. This is my question. What is it that you're not buying that you're expecting someone else to give you? And, and, and if we want to internalize that a little bit more, why is it that everybody else has what they need and we never have enough? And the truth is, it's because they bought it and we're looking for them to provide it. The truth is, we need to be about the business of purchasing our own oil, okay? And the truth is, is that we don't want to purchase it, we just want it given to us. And if we want it given to us, nobody will ever give it to you because you can never have oil, the true oil, the true goods, the stuff inside. You can never have that given to you. You have to purchase it through your obedience to what God is saying. I'm going to Christianize it, okay? And the truth is, is that we need Christ in us. We need the Bible. We need this Word of God in us. That's, that's the oil. That's what we need in us. So then we have not just enough for ourselves, but we have something to give when someone comes. And it's going to sound like advice, too. Most of the time, it sounds like advice. Hey, what do you think I should do right now? And, and you're like, well, if it was me, I would go to those that are selling, okay? And, and so, so it's not going to another church necessarily, but it's about getting the Word of God into us. It's about experiencing the, the Word of God in a whole different level. Like, like, like I, I, I can't go through this day without reading the Bible. I can't go through the day without praying a prayer. I can't go through the day or through the moment. All right? I, I just can't even go to work today unless I, I'm prayed up, unless I got something to give. Like, like when, I, when I go to work, I'm, my employer is expecting me to produce, right? But when I go into relationships, I'm expecting them to produce. I got nothing to bring there. And the truth is, is God is not asking us Jesus didn't die on a cross just to die on a cross to, to forgive you of your sin. He died so that you, he could give you a gift, right? And that gift I take into every other relationship. If I said it once, I've said it a thousand times. You're the only one. You're the only ingredient. I'm the only ingredient present in every circumstance of my life. And if I don't like the circumstances, the only way to change the circumstances is to change what's inside of me. So I have to go and purchase something brand new to bring to the circumstance so the circumstance will take notice of what's, what just arrived on the scene. Because the answer is not in the circumstance. The answer is in us. And so if we have the answer in us, we need to live that out into the circumstances around us. So every relationship, every trial, Everything that's going on has to align itself with the truth, with the oil that I have inside of me. Amen? And so, so if I want to take the oil with me, I've got to have it with me first. Amen? I don't go there and say, oh, now I need oil. I don't go there and say, oh, now i gotta, I got to get right with God. And now I'm going to pray my prayers. No, i got to do that before I go. So that when I go, I am not unprepared. So I am, not, I, am not, I am not looking at the circumstance as God anymore, okay? I'm looking to the God who saved my soul, the God who died on the cross, the God who sent his son, the God who is, he is, is, is purest love. It's love. God, the God I serve, the God I read about in Scripture is the God of love. To, to, if you desire love, you would desire God. And if, and if you desire him, you would you would walk towards him and with him. Amen? I purchased 
the oil that I need for my circumstance. The circumstance doesn't dictate what God has done in me. The cir circumstances must line up with what's inside of us, and it already has. It already has. Some of us need to, need to talk to some circumstances in our life. Some of us got to tell a circumstance, you know what? <laughs> uh, not, not today. Not today, circumstance. Not today. I got something, I got something to say to you today. And so I want to I wanna give you some, some, some I think Apostle Paul said it, said it best. He said, he said, pray for me that I would have boldness to speak, right? Boldness to say. Maybe you should say that with me. I'm going to pray. Say it with me. Don't, don't just listen to me talk. Say, say it with me. I'm going to pray that God will give me boldness to say what needs to be said. Amen? So let me just pray for, let me just pray for you, wherever you are right now. Just If you're driving a car, don't, don't close your eyes. I know somebody that did that one time. Every time they prayed, they had this thing, they got to close their eyes all the time. And, and they were driving, and they said, let's pray. And they're like, okay. And, and so then you live by faith, right? Because you peek every once in a while. You know how strong their faith is, right? But <laughs> it doesn't matter if you close your eyes or not. It really doesn't even matter that we say the proper words all the time. But what it does matter is that I pray. And that my faith lines up with what I'm praying right now so that God can answer that faith. Because God will always honor your faith every time. Amen? Amen. Let's pray, right? Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you would give us boldness. Boldness to be in pursuit of truth. Boldness to walk towards you. Boldness and courage to change the circumstances around us. I thank you right now, God, for new strength, new courage, and especially a new boldness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. No matter where you are right now, I want to connect with you. So if, you have, if, you have, if, if, if you're listening to me, whatever platform you're on, go to mybreakthrough.online. That's our website. And, and you can connect with us on all of our social media. Uh, you can be, become a partner with us. We just, we just want to connect, but I especially want to know that, that this message has touched your heart. And I want you to put in a comment, say, you know what, God touched my heart. I, I, I believe for boldness today. Just put, put, put a little lion in there, okay? Arr, you know, I got something inside of me today. I'm, I'm ready to go today. I'm ready to see God do something that he has never done before in my life. I'm ready for it today. Amen? God bless you. Have a great week.